What's going on, my boys? Today is another exciting episode of the Think Phase podcast. Now, today we're going to be getting into a lot of different things. We have um, a great topic of conversation because what are we talking about today? It's modern Yu-Gi-Oh! as a whole. Now, I'm going to have a lot of examples of this. I found that You know, through the Cyber Dragon week, if you didn't check that out already, you got to check that out. It was a great week. Um, And we ended it off with a stream. And you can technically say we are ending it off with this episode because this episode covers uh, one of my experiences with the Cyber Dragon deck during the building of it. But also, you know, I intend on playing this deck fully through and through. If you didn't, um, check out that stream. You know, part of the stream in Dual Links was to unlock the Link Karibo so that we could play the deck. Well, I got to use and I got reacquainted with an old combo. So if you know about that, you know, get ready. It's going to be pretty spicy when we play ranked later on. But today we're going to be talking about modern Yu Gi Oh! We're going to be talking about it from end to end. We're going to be talking about, you know, what was old school Yu Gi Oh! You know, when did it change to the current day modern Yu-Gi-Oh! And then what has that evolved into? Um, We're gonna be talking about um, the evolution of power creep in cards. So you're gonna be going from, you know, um, something as simple as, I don't know, Sangin's effect, which is, you know, very simple effect, you know, all the way up to something like Snake Eye Ash. So we're gonna be covering that as well. And then also, Um, We're going to be talking about combo lines a little bit, um, and then we're also going to close this with um, an analysis of a duel from the Cyber Dragon week, which Cyber Dragon is cracking a quote-unquote unbeatable board. It was so powerful that Konami actually banned this deck from uh, existence, and um, I faced it with Cyber Dragons, which is an old-school deck. And because it's an old-school deck, and we're talking about transitioning from you know, retirement, old school Yu-Gi-Oh or wherever you're coming from to the modern game. I feel like it's all within this uh, framework that we're talking about. So let's just get into it. So the first thing I want to talk about here is just, you know, what was old school Yu-Gi-Oh? You know, primarily um, old school Yu-Gi-Oh before synchro summoning. So that's the first thing I want to point that out. The dimensions that cross the quote unquote Rubicon, you know, the Rubicon that Konami and the players both crossed was the synchro era. When we went from being able to special summon chaos monsters, which was pretty much utilizing the graveyard as a resource, um, and then pretty much going from one summon per turn to maybe two or three summons per turn, that opened the door up for the you know evolution to Yu-Gi-Oh. Kazuya Takahashi mentioned um, one of his motivations for creating um, the tuner monster was so that um, the lower level or weaker monsters had the ability to have some sort of utilization. Up until that time, people weren't using those cards because they just was weak. Um, so comes to mind what was one of the first cards that was a tuner that was really influential. Crabons, because it was able to be special summit by the quick play spell emergency teleport. So right there, you start to see where the game has changed. I could start my turn by activating emergency teleport and summoning Crabons. And by doing that, I've started the turn with a monster on the field. I could do anything from that point. I could tribute this monster. I could uh, use this monster for my enemy controller, you know, to break your board back then. You know, whatever the case may be. But Krebons changed how the game was played with Emergency Teleport. And prior to that, you know, what are we looking at for old school Yu-Gi-Oh? We're looking at summoning a monster for the normal summoning, like a um, Mystic Tomato, activating a spell like Creature Swap, changing both monsters, and then attacking that tomato, hoping that there's no Mirror Force or Sakuretsu armor, back row to protect it. And then, of course, um, advantage is created there. So rather than create advantage from activating a card from the hand, blowing your normal summon and hoping that your your opponent has a monster and back row that you can engage with, the game was dramatically sped up with those 
quick play spells that could special summon a monster and you see that even to this day you know we have cards like that that work with branded you know quick place cards that summon stuff directly from the deck or or set things you know whatever the case may be which helps you to explode and move past uh your opponent you know quickly or to get your play started or to break the board or whatever the case may be so the reason why i want to kind of open up with that is because basically this is where you see a change in Yu-Gi-Oh. we go from you having to invest your entire hand for a winning combo think of something like oh really old school exodia literally five cards it, that's your whole hand starting off or think of something you know like another old school combo you summon a monster and use a bunch of equip spells that's your entire hand blown on one card so you can invest everything into one card but that was always like a foolish endeavor so you know why don't we do that anymore because basically what came up was the uh, whole notion of a two card combo and by the time synchros came around that was the ideal like manifestation of what a two card combo was a tuner and a uh, non tuner come together make a synchro same with like polymerization if you think back to that th that was not um, a quote unquote competitive uh, means of dueling because you needed polymerization two materials so that's like three cards and sometimes it could cost even more like four cards so when contact fusion came around that took that cost down from three down to two so you even saw back there with gladiator beast and contact fusion before synchro there was the whole idea of the two card combo that was being imprinted into the game and utilized by players so that being said the meta game is being set up around these two card combos if your deck can't get going with a two card combo then your deck is kind of not good because basically what that means is if my combo can start with two cards, then I have three additional cards ready to block my opponent or to help me get into those two cards. So you can think of, you know, way back in the day, cards like Graceful Charity. You know, you probably play something like that. You know, you probably play Pot of Greed because, you know, I got my two card combo. But in order to get to these two cards, I'm going to use my draw cards to get to them very simpler I mean, or very uh, easily. But what has happened through time? is that these cards have been changed from um, draw cards to specific archetype related cards that will search these specific cards directly out of your deck so as I talked about gladiator beast think gladiator beast proving ground that lets you search out a specific gladiator beast or even cards like reinforcements of the army that searches generically for warriors but it's locked off specifically in warriors and you can think to the current day things like bonfire to search, you know, snake eye ash. So that being said, you know, you, you seem to learn that there's a trend of cards that search one specific card to get things moving. And as you already know, or may not know, that's called a starter card. Now these starter cards are gonna be like the key thing that's gonna revolve around all these combos or revolve around getting the play started which means that the starter card normally goes to get another card or back then it just worked well with another extender card. Like while this card is on the field, do that, summon this, etc. So by the time we go from this whole idea of the um, quote unquote uh, two card combo, we start to get a little bit deeper into this. We start to get, um, uh, I want to say more complex because after synchro summoning, everything just begins to open up like a floodgate, uh, pun intended. So basically, we get, you know, the exceeds, which opens up resource uh, gain, which we do discuss in the book in great detail. We just talk about um, pretty much all the different eras. But to just sum it up very succinctly for this episode, you know, you get Xyz, which opens up resource management and gain. You get powerful cards that let you search cards directly from the deck. And they're pretty much accessible with um, 
anything that's like level four or something like that like they're, they're pretty accessible so you get these accessible monsters that can do exceed summoning but then on top of that the most popular synchro summon was like a four and something else so if it, it, the most popular synchro is a four or something else these exceeds are like um welcome ads so you add these exceeds monsters to the synchro mix to also um the different virgining uh fusion cards that was coming out it was just a lot of different things entering into the field and then as we keep expanding the uh the extra deck out um and we get to eventually um one of the most controversial uh parts which is like pendulum so this is where i personally believe where this concept or idea of the um moving things away from the two card combo because pendulums allowed you to have something beyond the um, normal summon. So if you really think about it like this, you got to really think about it. And we're going to get into this later on as we get down to the uh, demonstration later on with the cyber dragons. But you can think of the duelist think of the duelist as a body like like the body of a duelist think of it as your body and when you're in a duel you know literally you know you got your eight thousand life points that's literally your life but think of the things that you can do in a duel in the modern day like you can activate a spell you can play a trap you know all these different things that you can do are different um things coming out of your body so if like if 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 it's like that, then your opponent in some kind of way is trying to prevent you from utilizing these pieces of your body. They're preventing you from using your spells. They don't want you to speak. They're preventing you from using your summon. They're trying to stop your commands. Like if you think about it like that, you can understand that you're basically trying to afflict the basic functions of the game, the basic functions of the body. And that's just similar, similar to martial arts, similar to any other physical fight. You're trying to eliminate the threats before the threats can eliminate you. So that's going to take us to chapter three, chapter three of revival of the duelist, my boy. That's going to take us right here to the combo line section where I'm going to read something off for y'all. That's very important because this encapsulates the whole idea of what modern Yu-Gi-Oh is. This encapsulates the sum total of resource building and resource management and also the strategic framework of how these extra deck mechanics grew out the quote-unquote combo and brought it down into something more succinct like one or two cards so that cards like hand traps like ash could affect them so that we could actually have stimulating gameplay so that we could actually predict and understand what our opponents are playing so that we can actually interact with the decks that we want to play so let's go ahead i'm just going to read this from uh the book right here so this is from the combo line section often in Yu-Gi-Oh, roles must be fulfilled the turn one player will set the tone uh, and stage of the duel by establishing field presence taking control of the board or laying traps if this player is successful he or she can typically win the duel by turn three or at least gain a substantial lead directly to victory so what that means is on the very first turn whoever plays going first that's their goal the goal is to prevent inflict constrict the body duelist is to take your abilities and make them know so you're gonna still be alive to see all this you're gonna be alive but they're their whole idea is to stun you, is to paralyze you, is to cause you to not be able to play your game. And that is just the nature of Yu-Gi-Oh. So if you know this, what do you do? You don't allow them to play into you. You don't allow them to create a strategy that can actually affect you. Because part of Yu-Gi-Oh, the, the most important part of Yu-Gi-Oh is knowledge, is knowledge before you walk into the duel. 
Now, when you play a game like Master Duel, you're going to be subjected to um, a lot of variables that are unpredictable. But I will argue that these variables are highly predictable due to the metagame and the sheepish nature in which it is followed. If you look into the meta or you look into the ban list, you know exactly what you're going to come across. And if you know that, you can build your deck to fight against it. If you know that, you can make the changes that only your archetype can benefit from so that you can fight against these quote-unquote unbeatable scenarios. Now, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to do that? I shared this in my live stream previously that the, rain re the main reason why you want to do that is because there can only be one champion of Yu-Gi-Oh! And it's more than likely not you, okay? So you got to come to terms with why you're dueling, not long term, why you're dueling today, why you sat down to play the game today. And if you sat down and played the game for just aimless victory because you wanted to hold the dub, okay, that's cool. You might pick the same old meta deck and that's fine. Everybody has their place, you know, in the world. You know, we need folks to go down the path of the meta so that duelists like myself or new duelists or anyone else who chooses to be on the quote unquote other side of the prescribed path can have a means and method to attack against this meta. So I'm not done reading that because I'm, or I'm not done reading this book because at the point where I, I just read that line, we have a, a, another line because it's talking about the player that goes second, my boy. So here it is. However, the turn two player can turn this around. After all, Sun Tzu also states, know the enemy and know yourself. And in a hundred battles, you will never be in peril. So what does that mean? That means that when it comes to playing Yu-Gi-Oh! and it's a one-on-one -on -one experience like Master Duel, or even an experience like Locals, like where it's a closed meta, because it doesn't matter what the internet says the metagame is. It doesn't matter what the YouTube says it is or anyone's website says it is. When you go to Locals, Locals is what you play against. It just is what it is. If everybody brings Sword Soul that week, it's Sword Soul meta. And if you came ready to play against Dia Bellstar, I mean, I don't know. Are you prepared to play against Sword Soul? Maybe not. But that's the whole idea of knowing how to be an actual great duelist and not just being a person who can, you know, follow directions well. That's just someone who goes to school. Do you like school? Go back to school. Go to school if you want to follow directions to the T. But if you want to fight and duel at the edge of your seat, my boy, if you want to if you want to put your soul into the game and you want to feel the rush of a of a true duelist, my boy, there's only one way. You got to get these lessons. So that's what this podcast is all about. So let me see here. I guess got to double check my notes here because I have a lot of stuff to say to you guys about all this stuff. So um, I actually I didn't I, I said a lot of that stuff and I kind of deviated. So this would be a good time for a break. Now, below me, you see my uh, banner. It says Demystify Yu-Gi-Oh! with DuelistGPT.com. You guys need to go and check out the AI that I created, you know, on OpenAI's platform. You know, it's called um, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist AI. You can check it out on my website, DuelistGPT.com. It is a AI assistant that will help you play competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! It is absolutely free. You can ask it any ruling question it knows. You can ask it any Yu-Gi-Oh question it knows. You can ask it how to, to build a certain deck it knows. It can build you a deck. It can put you down the right path. It can make suggestions. It can do all kinds of things that you could possibly imagine that ChatGPT can do, this AI can do, but it has a specific focus in competitive dueling only. 
So you've got to use it, my boy. It's one of those things that you've got to see it to believe. So use the link in the description, my boy, to check it out for absolutely free. Now, also, if you're wondering what book is he reading from, I'm reading from the book I wrote, Revival of the Duelist. You've got to check it out. This book is going to be the cornerstone that gives you the basics so, so that you can have the understanding to play this game better than someone who's just following directions. This gives you the basics of the game from a competitive standpoint because it's this ain't no rule book. This is not a like a like a welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh. This is a monster. You know, you attack them directly with it. You know, it's a little bit of that in there. Got to you know, got to start you off right. But it's not a rule book. <laughs> so you got it. Like I'm telling you right now, I'm reading from this combo lines chapter. There's no combo lines chapter in the rule book. So you got to check it out, my boys. You can actually read it for free on um, Kindle Unlimited. And of course, you can check it out on the website. Also, let's get right back to it. So what I want to talk about was the pendulum um, archetype that was added. That pendulum archetype adds on another layer of summoning. So you get your normal summon where you once per turn, you can get your normal summon. You get a special summon that every deck and every archetype can do, um, which is you know pretty innocuous at this point, especially in modern day. And you get the pendulum summon. Now that's a different summon that only a singular archetype can do. And how the rules is set up now, you get the pendulum summon to um, the points of a link monster. Now, because of that, typically the highest you can summon from your extra deck um, for a pendulum summon is normally two cards or two resources. But what those two cards are and what they do when they get summoned can vary. But from the pendulum showing up, that created the 1.5 card combo solidified it because basically you're recouping your card your cards that you use and then it solidified it even more went beyond it with those pendulum magicians and and uh i think it's called pepe and and all those other different crazy pendulum decks that was resource um insane utilizing all the extra deck mechanics exceeds and synchro and sometimes fusion everything those went to zero card combos to basically like negative, like you didn't need any cards. At a certain point, the cards are producing dividends and you can end on 10 cards and you start it with five. Like, honestly, when you're playing Yu-Gi-Oh, you can judge the power of your hand by two things going first. If you went first and you started with five cards and these five cards, if you alone against your opponent, will probably not have any effect. But if you you do your combo or you complete your combo line and these five cards turn to 10 cards and all 10 cards are live against your opponent, that's pretty damn good. <laughs> So let's say you take that same five cards and you take the five cards and you turn all five cards into interactive cards against your opponent in their turn. That's good too, but it's risky because you don't have recovery. So there's a dichotomy to the, to this, but we'll delve deeper into that and in maybe another podcast, but uh, maybe in resource management. But right now um, we're focused very heavily on, the scenario um, of how these combos have evolved, how they have changed, how um, we've went from a two card combo system to a 1.5 combo system to a one card combo and zero card combo. So by the time pendulum goes crazy, we're at zero card combos. You can't have that in a game. You can't have that anywhere. That's ridiculous. So. They came through with master rule changes. They came through with bands. They came through Electromite still gone, but it's here in Master Duel. You know, they've they've they went crazy. Konami banned, 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 banned everything. But the whole idea of putting cards down to a singular uh combo line coming from one starter 
never left the zeitgeist of Yu-Gi-Oh! And it has always remained. And because of that, we get to the one card combos, the three effect rules. So what is so what is the three effect rule? I'm I'm gonna coin the three effect rule starting with the pendulum because if you just break down the pendulum, you got the pendulum effect, you got the monster effect, and then you also got the scale. I, and and I, and not saying like anything else about pendulums or their other additional effects and graveyard and all the other stuff. I'm just gonna make it very plain and simple. The three effect rule started with the pendulum cards, but really, realistically, it started with the archetype cards like Cyber Dragon, like Gladiator Beasts, because what happened was the name became an ability. When the name was an ability because of the archetype like Gladiator Beasts, any two Gladiator Beasts together makes the Gazaris. Guess you lose two. Guess, guess, that's, guess my name is a resource now. Cyber Dragon. My name is Cyber, Cyber Dragon Core, for example. My name is Cyber Dragon on the field and in the graveyard. I can also search a resource. That's pretty damn good. So eventually we get to this point, you know, they call it power creep. You know, power creep sounds bad when you're talking about it in a negative sense about how things get weaker. But I guess power creep going up, you know, things are getting stronger. So basically what it is is a consolidation of power creep into these new cards that can do things by themselves, one card combos. But these one card combos are, are hidden. The one card combos aren't necessarily all from starters. Sometimes you gotta get set up going to initiate the one card combo. So they didn't make it very plain, like, like Gladiator Bees Dragasis. You had to have an, a, a bunch of setup, and, or you see in my Tri Brigade deck, for example, you don't need a lot of setup. You just got to have stuff in your deck and be willing to have certain conditions be available to make this play go. But it can be a one card combo, but it's an elaborate one card combo. But what happens when they put it all into one card, like Snake Eye Ash or um, Naturia? Um, I forget the one that pops out of the graveyard, um, the cricket, mole cricket, Naturia mole cricket. Like these cards that have these three effects coming out of a starter consolidates the game, consolidates the power, and it makes people go into hand trap meta. So you, have, you might have heard about the hand trap mini game. And as I mentioned to you previously about if it's a two card combo, you got three cards available to stop your opponent or to get your play started. But in a game where there's over 11,000 cards individually, anything can be chosen. So some duelists may choose, I'm running a deck with a one card starter, Snake Eye Ash. So I'm gonna pack it with as many um, first turn hand traps to stop my opponent because I feel like dude, my opponent's gonna play just like me. They're gonna play the best deck. So I'm gonna play, you know, the same thing. So they're, so they're going to stack their deck with Ash and Ghost Ogre and whatever else, Effect Valor, Imperm, whatever else in the Biru that they can use to stop that opponent. But what happens when the opponent isn't playing their game and is playing their own game? What happens when the opponent's win condition isn't determined by how many hand traps the opponent has? When you go rogue and accept a new strategy or an archetype within this game of 11,000 cards, you find your own strategies, you find your own mechanics, you find your own game being played in the midst of someone's deadlock strategy. So again, that goes to this whole dichotomy of the turn one player setting the stage and the turn two player knowing themselves, the turn two player knowing the opponent. You must choose to go second if you got that together. If you don't have that together, you always want to go first. So let's get into um, the duel now. Let's get let's 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 just get into um, the example because I feel like I've talked to you long enough about this whole idea of going first and going second, and I feel that you fully understand that it is a matter of perspective of where you stand of what you think about 
when you're playing in the actual game of Yu-Gi-Oh. So let's just go ahead and take a look at the at the game. All right, as you can see, we are going second and I am playing the Cyber Dragon deck. As I told you, this is Cyber Dragon week. So I'm gonna point out to you a lot of interesting things in this game, you know, in, in this duel. And I'm gonna tell you stuff at the end and I'm gonna give, of course, give you some stuff right now. So as you can see, you looking in our hand, we have no hand traps. So we're fully subjected to our opponent's combo, whatever it is, you know, whatever horrors he has within these five cards, you know, <laughs> he got them. Uh, so right now, as the game starts, we have no clue what he's playing. You know, it's a standard 40 card deck, 15 card extra deck. He doesn't even have sleeves, so he's not telegraphing anything. So there's no telling what he's doing. So let's just go ahead and just see what's going on in this duel. So summons this, you kind of already know where he's going. This is before the ban. So this is Naturia. So he instantly gives himself away. And this is the go a second duelist at work. The go second duelist is constantly analyzing and paying attention, especially if they don't have any cards to play. But as you see, I do have a Kaiju, so I do have a card to play. But regardless, he summoned this Naturia Kamalea. And because he summoned that, I know that he is on that um, Naturia Archfiend uh, combo. <laughs> the thing that pretty much locks you out of uh, playing the game uh, by turning off all your effects. So it's a pretty damaging effect. Uh, it's a pretty strong board and as I told you, you know, it's trying to restrict the body duelist It's trying to make sure that I don't have any um, Methods of play or any um, Avenues to approach this opponent. So if you aren't familiar with this like Horus combo or setup They use the Horus engine to pump out resources and they use the Naturia tuners to um, pretty much make powerful synchros and together with the Crimson Dragon, they can synchro summon in my turn. And then also with the Naturia monsters, they can um, special summon an Omni Negate directly from the deck or, or at least it's an effect monster negate. It isn't a negate from the deck. Now, I wanna point something out to you really quick here because you might not have noticed that it just went by a second ago as I was talking to you. He just threw away side frame gear gamma. Now as a duelist who is going second, and this is again, my, this is my speciality. This is what I, what I'm saying, what you have to notice. He is confident that I don't have a response. He has written me off. He has thrown away a powerful hand trap that could not only secure his victory, but he feels that whatever he's doing, whatever he's building right here is good enough to hold me back. It's good enough to stop me. So let's see what he has on the board right now because he's making, in my eyes, a risky play. Now, is it a risky play? Not really, from his perspective, it's a good play. But again, if you're going second or playing Yu-Gi-Oh and you have to play second, you got to look at these small signs. These small signs gives you insight to your gameplay. It's going to tell you how to win. This is how you're going to find your combo. This is how you're going to find the break, the chink in his armor. So he threw away Cyframe Gear Gamma and it's gone. But on the board, he has Cosmo Blazer Dragon which says when your opponent activates a card or effect, negate and destroy. Also, when your opponent summons a monster, negate the summon. When your opponent declares an attack, negate the battle phase. So basically, he doesn't think I'm, nothing's getting past this. So he's going off on his combo. Then he's got super heavy samurai, brave, don't pronounce that one. I don't know that one. <laughs> but anyway, this card says once per turn, if your opponent activates a spell or a trap, draw three cards. So basically he's like imperm if you dare. Imperm if you dare. 
and I'm and you know, so basically he 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 feels like if we were playing a game of chess. He's like check. That's what he feels like he's doing right now. He feels like he has me in check. And then this car, um, of course, I believe is just uh, when it leaves the field, it does something. Yeah, we have when it leaves the field, uh, da, 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 leaves the field or opponent's effect while it's in a monster zone. You can draw cards equal to the numbers with different names in the main monster zone. So basically, you know, if I nib this, maybe there'll be consequences. But reality, this would stop the nib. So, you know, there isn't much I can do, but he threw away gear gamma so that t that tells me he's going all in so whatever solution i surmise i should be able to if i can get it through his defenses i should be able to do something so let's keep going so he continues to cut now here's the crimson dragon this is the setup sets one back row ends turn turn change okay so listen here is the card that's going to shut me off from using effects um then you, we already read the cosmo blazer we already read this one and then this is has been switched out this is a different one let me see yeah yeah this one basically says if it leaves the field um your opponent can't target horus monsters so basically it's like this isn't as deadly but it's not something that you want to kill uh unless you you know got some sort of strategy but basically as as he ends the turn we're gonna go ahead and pass and then i draw into galaxy soldier and then he goes ahead and hits up the free synchro for the red hot arch fiend which basically just says when this card is summoned for the rest of your turn your opponent cannot activate cards or effects on the field your opponent cannot activate cards or effect in response to this activation okay this is very unfair every deck can't play through this every duelist can't play through this they begged konami for a solution and they aided you with a ban but i created a solution from my hands so look i'm i'm staring down this board and i'm teaching i'm going to teach you right now the key principles on going second it's three things you got to do to go second first you must read you must read every card on the board you must read the graveyard you must read from that previous turn you experienced you must read 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 so let's read we already read um about the arch fiend we already read about cosmo blazer and the samurai let's read about naturia mole cricket because see this is the move that he didn't expect us to read this is the move that he was banking on using his knowledge against ours but because we know ourselves, we can know that enemy. So let's read this right now. During the main phase, quick effect, you can tribute this card and special summon one Naturia monster from your deck or two Naturia monsters if your opponent controls a monster with the highest attack on the field or, you know, if it's, or if it's tied, you know, you know you basically give him the effect if your opponent con controls ah, if your opponent special summons a monster from the extra deck or special summons the naturia monster from the extra deck while this card is in the graveyard you can special summon this card so basically what this says is a lock on the special summon because if i special summon there's likely to be a special summon to follow and if I special summon, he's going to get a free resource, maybe even two. So I have to keep that in mind as I'm managing my punishment of no effects or cards per turn. Like I can't activate anything. Nothing on the field will work. And then I have to deal with the whole ability of 
having my summon negated, my normal summon. So he's attacked my, he uh, on the body duelist, he has attacked my normal summon. He has attacked my special summon. He has attacked my ability to play spells and traps in general. And also he will stand to gain advantage if I make a move, such a move. So for me, I have to had already had the solution for this before I stepped into the duel. There's no amount of comboing in my brain that could defeat this man if I didn't build the deck correctly from the jump. And I built it correctly from the jump because I knew and understood the mission of not only the cyber dragons, but of the meta, of the mind of the duelist that is out there. The ones that sheepishly follow. This deck is on the outs. This deck is gonna be banned. Shouldn't you be preparing yourself to be a better duelist in the next matches? No, no, you're going for an empty victory. Let me get, let me get a W of full satisfaction. So first off, as we read all these cards, right? We got to acknowledge the truth. And what was the truth? The truth is that spells, traps, normal and special summons and all effects have been locked out. I am only left with one option. I'm only left with one mode of play. And this deck, don't get me wrong, this is not a this is not a shabby deck. If I created this combo myself, I'd highly suggest it. Be proud that Konami got it banned. Or be proud that I got it banned if I made it. <laughs> but I, I must take it down. <laughs> but I'm just saying acknowledge that this deck has fully restricted the body duelist the body duelist cannot move but as long as i got life points what's happening i'm still alive so that means that something is still moving in these veins something is keeping me going what is my turn i draw whoa it seems like i've got motor functions i might not be able to play the game but I can play the game through the only method allowed to me, the actual mechanics of the game, because I understand the mechanics of the game. I got the fundamentals down and the advanced tactics. You know what I'm saying? And if I need any help, I got the AI to help me along the way. But like I said before, we've got it down. So approaching this board, we can only use game mechanics to defeat him. So first, because we know the way to get these plays going, we took a full acknowledgement and analysis of this board. We know that our only means of making any plays is to first get rid of the card that's gonna stop us from normal summoning. That's gonna, that's gonna stop us from summoning, <laughs> period. And this Naturia Cricket in the graveyard, we're gonna worry about this we're going to cross that road when we get to it because this card is only truly dangerous with another Naturia monster on the board and currently there is not one. Also, this monster is only truly dangerous if I have monsters with higher attack and clearly, as you can see, I do not. Now, what am I left with here? I must fight with the mechanics. So advanced duelists might know where, where I'm going with this but maybe not all. So let's continue. We're gonna use Amazon as War Chief. Now, because I made the decision to create a fusion engine that I can use in my Cyber Dragon deck that includes Amazon as War Chief, it's in this deck. Most Cyber Dragon duelists don't have this. So guess what? Most Cyber Dragon duelists lose to this. Not me. I've got the Amazon as War Chief. I'm using mechanics of the game. You can't ha you can't stop the inherent special summon of the Amazonas War Chief with anything you have. You can't do it. Then I go Galaxy Soldier. There it is. But all my effects are negated on the field, not in the graveyard, you silly billy. My name is Cyber Dragon in the graveyard. Because the name is Cyber Dragon in the graveyard, my cards are live and I get a search. So let's go. Now, at this stage, I am now neutral 
well not neutral i'm neutral to the first turn but i'm about to go down in advantage but don't worry we go down in advantage so that we can spike up in prosperity so let's go ahead and do it we're going to hit up our xc's to an xc's rank five to cut <laughs> to chronomaly vimana now chronomaly that chron that's a mouthful chronomaly vimana is an Xyz monster with 2300 attack points. If you don't know where I'm going, I'm gonna need you to hit that like button. Now listen, this Vimana beast is gonna have one attack, one chance to swing, and we're going in against this mysterious back row. There's no telling what it is, but I don't have time to worry for that. I have created an opportunity to find victory through game mechanics and i can't worry about that back row man as you see the gods did not provide me with the tools to deal with the back row the gods want me to challenge the back row by attacking with faith and i will do so so now we use chronomaly vimana to strike against the samurai why not this didn't want to risk the biscuit why kill this thing why kill anything it's not his field's time to die not yet so now we attack and because we attacked we get a special effect that we can use due to the mechanics of the game this is the only part of the body duelist that's still dancing this is the only part of the body duelist that he had no control over he can do nothing to the body duelist because I broke the board by disrupting his key negation with an inherent card that I can play in the deck because I didn't mention this before, but I abandoned Max C and exchanged it for Jesus Kiru. Why? Because Jesus Kiru can be searched and Max C cannot. So we play two Jesus Kiru instead of Max C. And you see Jesus Kiru is the hero. So we're gonna go ahead and do our final exceeds into our game winner to the upsetter to everybody's favorite, Divine Arsenal Zeus. So now, oh shit, he gets scared. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> now, now the thing about these decks are they, they're kind of glass cannons. Even though it is a glass cannon, this is a very effective cannon. Uh, He's like, I got to do something. I got to have a response to this. Honestly, a lot of people don't got a response to this. That's why it's restricted to one. But my restricted to one limit card, my game mechanic summon versus your band combo. Let's see who wins. So he's going to pop off the cricket. He's going to get, get the Kamalea. Kamalea is going to send down the tree. The tree is going to search and add his blessings. Then he's gonna pop blessings and go for, I think it's a synchro, yeah. Go for a synchro to bring out the Crimson Dragon because now he's trying to plan some shenanigans because now he's like, oh no, I've gotta do something. <laughs> and it's already too late. So now he goes to draw and because I have read these cards and I've already witnessed what he could do with the Crimson Dragon, I'm not gonna wait for him to resolve this. Why would I wait for him to resolve this? It's time for Divine Arsenal Double A Zeus to, to send him down. I'm going to chain so that this does not resolve. We're going to put all those cards in the graveyard and we're going to go ahead and let your turn go. He's going to try to get some blessings going. But as you can see, he's out of gas. He's struggling. And also, <coughs> he's trying to stall for some time. He goes into Babushka. Now, Babushka is interesting. And this is why, you know, see, this is what people now see. This is what an old school player says. Old school players. Now, this is for my old school viewers. You know, send this to an old school player. Send this to an old school duelist. Who send this to any person who ever comes up with the argument. Who talks that shit and goes, well, I, I don't like playing Yu-Gi-Oh. It's, it's too complicated. It's got all this stuff. No. No, no, I prefer back and forth. No, you only get back and forth when you're a high skilled duelist. You only get back and forth 
when you know what you're doing. Back and forth Yu-Gi-Oh was deadened by the Synchro era. You don't get back and forth unless you're good enough. Seto Kaiba on the anime set that shit up in the anime. He 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 basically said it best. Like setting up stuff like Battle City where it was so critical for you to be good or you'd lose your best stuff. You don't lose your best stuff in Master Duel. All you do is take hits directly to your ego, directly to your pride. I know it hurts. That's why you're crying on YouTube. Wah, wah. I can't do it. I can't win. Well, try harder. You got to start learning. You got to start learning the mechanics because the reason why we're in this position is because I planned this out before I even stepped into the duel. I was smart enough to say, if they set up an unbreakable board, I kaiju and a, and a rank five exceeds is going to end that real quick. Now, because he's in this position, he's like, well, damn, I'm sure this is a cyber dragon deck. You know, he's not going to be able to get past this. Like, like, you know, whatever. He's making assumptions now because I've put him on the back foot. Now he's got to try to think on the fly. Well, what is he playing? Now he has to consider me. Now he has to acknowledge me. Now he has to see me. You got to think about it. The duelist who plays the deck that tries to completely lock your opponent out from playing any cards doesn't care what you have. They don't care that it's unfair. They don't care that that it's negative or whatever the, 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 the zeitgeist around the deck may be. They don't care. They're just playing to play. They're just playing to win. But now... Because of Divine Arsenal Double A Zeus, I made him have to consider the Cyber Dragon. I made him have to go think way back to 2008. Damn, what do they even play? Guess what? He doesn't know. He doesn't know anything of my power. Now I am the Risen God and he is the Fallen Son. This is Yu-Gi-Oh. So let's go. So now look, another card, another anomaly, something he's not expecting. Another card that's not Cyber Dragon in my Cyber Dragon deck. Gonna cook him even further, go beyond his expectations because guess what? I didn't forget you. I didn't forget you. I didn't forget your little stinky ass. I didn't forget this. No, we didn't forget this. Because if you forget this, this card can go get an Omni Negate or, or an Effect Monster Negate. Can't remember. It's one or, it's one or the other. It's, it's, it's disgusting. And it can go get that and another monster if you have a monster with higher attack. Now, I have the monster with higher attack on the field right now. But currently, he has a monster with 2100 attack. So, if I put a card out, he can do his Naturia combo and have it set up under Babushka. So that basically, you know, he can he can affect us in, so, in, in, in a certain kind of way. But we've got combos for him and we're going to be cheeky about it. So first off, we're going to normal summon and he's going to change our guy to defense mode. So right now he's like, yeah, fool, <laughs> Babushka changes you. And again, this is me perceiving him. But then again, again, like I said before, he is responding to the Cyber Dragon deck now that he has to consider what I'm capable of that he thinks I'm capable of because he goes off of what he knows and he knows nothing of my cyber dragon deck. He knows nothing of my power. So let's say I'm going to go into my link two. now he's thinking perfect link two. this is going to be the perfect time to, to pop the Naturia monster so I can get my two cards and get the advantage. But also when I hit a link links aren't affected by Babushka. So now, I'm summoning Galaxy Eyes Soul Flare Dragon. Now you, now he knows, you know, see, he's got to respect me now. This is two prismatic cards that I've summoned that he's never seen in a Cyber Dragon deck. He's going to be like, you know what? This guy, he must be a god. I am. So go ahead and use the effect to add back the Galaxy Soldier. And now he pops the cricket. But see, look, I have you right here. This says 2,100 of those things. This is 2,000 of those things. So guess who's got the monster with the higher attack? It's you. So guess who's not getting in the gate? Hee hee hee. 
So we're gonna go ahead and add the Galaxy Soldier. He's not gonna get the negate. He was expecting the negate. He was like, wait, I was gonna go search my deck for the negate. No, you weren't, because Babushka has 2,100 of those things. Now I have 3,000 of those things. I offer Babushka as tribute. <laughs> now, if he didn't see me before, he sees me now. <laughs> and then I let him know that it's a cyber emergency. Now, this is funny because now he has to pop this card and he knows shit. I'm never going to I'm I'm never going to have a guy bigger than him or I'm going to deal with that card. So now he pops the card. But also, secondarily, this card keeps you in check because it says you can discard a photon or a galaxy monster and then target a special summon monster your opponent controls and destroy it. So if he puts a guy on the field that I don't like, I can blow it up. But again, now I have him in the check. If we were playing chess, this is my check. This is my knight in the center. I have him at any direction. So now that he's seeing that he's being toyed with, <laughs> goes ahead and summons his uh, Naturia Cricket. He gets no additional beast. And then we're gonna go ahead and put out the Galaxy Soldier, go ahead and, and invoke the Hurts. And we're gonna put the Hurt on him. Gonna go ahead and get that cyber dragon, get that galaxy soldier, then go for it again. Because now we're gonna go into our Xyz 5. Now, see, this is what I'm telling you the power of Xyz. Xyz gets you resources. So you're gonna use Nova to bring back a resource. And then you're gonna use Nova to go to infinity. And now he can't escape, he has no options. And then infinity takes, and now it's time to bake. And it's over. It's over. Because infinity doesn't take until it's ready to negate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yes. So my boys, this is the this is my whole point in telling you this. Because if you are a duelist and you're looking to get back into the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! I feel that Yu-Gi-Oh! has changed so much that it is focusing now on going second. And I think that learning how to go second, learning how to build your deck to go second and utilize cards um, going second will just be a greater help as you go forward into the game. And, you know, check out Revival of the Duelist. It can help you learn how to duel. It can help you get those fundamentals down. It can help you learn how to use the mechanics to win the duel rather than even using the cards. So um let's take a look at the deck list so when i was talking about uh the naturia monster that he could search to get to negate it was this card it says when your opponent uh monster effect activates quick effect you can target a naturia monster negate the activation if you do destroy it so this card can negate a monster's effect and that's pretty much what the search was going for and as you can see in his deck it's just imperm maxi and nothing but engine because he believes that he can get his combo set up and he must go first to do so. So he's really planning on going first. So you saw a duelist who was really planning on going first versus a duelist who was really planning on going second. And that's why I wanted to showcase that duel for you uh, today. And also, as you can see, this card is banned. And also he definitely knew the power of Zeus. So he was even defeated by his own beast. <laughs> Poetic, how all duels should be. Now, now I have changed this deck just a little bit. Um, I have changed this deck just a little bit. I have added uh, Deep Sea Diva, and I have also added Christron Corian Gandrax. If you have not seen my uh, video where I explain to you guys. Um, pretty much how amazing uh oh no not not amazing it's uh it, it, sorry it's my dual links video let me go back <laughs> all right my boys here's the deck list we are going to be checking out this cyber dragon free to play deck list and this is the deck list that i was able to defeat that previous opponent with but i did make a couple small changes from um the last time i showed you guys this deck list and into right now because i did 
add Deep Sea Diva and then I added Chris Jaron Corian Gandrax. Um, I thought that that was just a really nice add from the Duel Links combo, which basically is summon Cyber Dragon, normal summon your Diva, and then you can go Chris Jaron Corian Gandrax and banish three cards. Should be really good against stuff like Snake Eye. Um, and I'm also looking to incorporate some new stuff to kind of accommodate that. I, mean, I have some new ideas around that, so I'm going to be working on that as well. But primarily, um, I just got rid of Max C and I got rid of Ash and I'm looking to let my opponents kind of just go all in on their combo. And then I'm looking to, to either break their board or drop their Snobiru. Now, Clockwork Knights is a really good card, but as you saw in that last duel, I didn't use Clockwork Knights at all. I really like playing one of these cards instead of like three of the card, but I mean, it's a really good card. So it's kind of like play at your own um, risk, so to speak. And then if you really want to get a full breakdown of the deck list, we've got the Hertz, we've got the Naster, we've got the Diva, we've got the Core, we've got the Chimera, Cyber Dragon, uh, East, Overlay Busta, Galaxy Soldier, Kaiser the Hidden Star, Amazon is War Chief, Therian King Regulus, Photon Emperor, Jizukiru, Nibiru, Polymerization, Power Bond, Cyber Emergency, Cyber Repair Plant, Cyber Dark Realm, Clockwork Knights, and The Overflow. Now, you can definitely get a full breakdown of the deck list in my Cyber Dragon Week uh, breakdown of the anatomy of the Cyber Dragon. Um, you can just check out that video. It should be linked in the card or something like that. Um, this definitely should be pretty spicy. And then also, we've got Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon. We've got Fortress Dragon. We've got Chimera Tech Mega Fleet. We've got Idaten the Conquering Star. We've got Kristran Corian Gandrax. We've got Cyber Dragon Nova. We've got Infinitrack River Stormer. We've even got Chronomaly Vimana. We've got Cyber Dragon Infinity. We've got Double A Zeus. We've got Al Mirage. We've got Cyber Dragon Sega. We've got Galaxy Eyes Soul Fair Dragon IP SP for game. Thanks so much for watching. And as also, my boys, and as also, and as always, keep it danked.